Praise the Lord. You are welcome to 10 minutes with God today again in Jesus' name. This time we are looking at the word of God in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 11 to verse 12, where Jesus said, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. He now said in verse 12, He said, Rejoice and be glad, exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. What Jesus Christ is telling us here is that we are blessed when we are persecuted for his name's sake. Let us pray before we dive into these two verses fully. Almighty Father, thank you because for word for us today. As we delve into these two verses of scriptures, we pray. Holy Spirit, breathe upon the word in Jesus' name. Expound it to us beyond, above what we ever know before in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I pray. I welcome you again to 10 Minutes with God today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every day for 10 minutes, we come into the presence of God to share the word of God together. I encourage you to drop your comments and your questions in the comment section below. And also drop your prayer and prayer requests in the comment section below. The Bible says, My people perish because they have no knowledge. And that is why we are going into the Word of God to bring out what the Word of God is saying concerning most of the verses or all of the verses in the scriptures. And we are taking them part by part as the Spirit of the Lord leads us. In the current um, segment, I'm looking at all the words of Jesus in the book of Matthew. All the words of Jesus in the book of Matthew. And we are starting from chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and now we are chapter 5. And we are going to move on until we get to chapter 28 of Matthew. I've been taking them verse by verse as they come together. But in this particular one we are looking at now, I'm taking two verses because the two verses are talking about, they are linking the same thing, talking about the same thing. In fact, verse 10 also is talking about the same thing, but in a different ways. And since it's totally separated, I left it alone. So as we go on, we're taking it as they come. Now, because it's 10 minutes, we can't take a lot to get out of it. We're taking it bit by bit, and that bit by bit, God is going to use it to do a good thing and a great and mighty thing in your life in Jesus' name. He said here that blessed are you when they revive and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. In this place, Jesus Christ is who is Jesus Christ talking to? He's talking to his disciples, he's talking to those who are listening to him. Wow, he's talking to those who are following him. He's not talking to just anybody on the street. He's talking to those who are keeping to his word. You know, he has begun in verse um, 3 of Matthew 5. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who come to God and say, God, without you, we are nothing. God, you are our source. God, we are empty. Feel us. God, we, we, we want you to help us. These people, they are humble. Those are the people he's talking to here. Who is Jesus Christ talking to here? He's talking to those who, who mourn. Uh, who mourn for they shall be comforted. Those who mourn for their sin, those who have repented of their sin, those who go to God and say, God, we are sinners and they repent. Is that who he's talking to here? Who is Jesus Christ talking to here? He's talking to, God, to, the, to the meek. Those who are meek and he promises that they will hear the earth. Those are the people he's talking to, he's talking to here. Because if you are not meek, you may not be persecuted per se. If you are not poor in spirit, you may not be persecuted per se because you will not even be doing what Jesus Christ is saying you should do. Who is Jesus Christ talking to here? He's talking to those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Those who want righteousness and go for it and they get it and they become righteous. And because they are righteous and for the teacher of Jesus Christ, they are not persecuted. Those are people Jesus Christ is talking to. Now, who is he talking to again? He's talking to the merciful. Those who go out of their way to assist and help other people. Those are the people he's talking to. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the pure in heart because he said in Matthew 5 verse 8 that piercing are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Who is Jesus Christ talking to here? He's talking to the peacemakers. He said, Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Jesus Christ here is talking to the peacemakers. Who is Christ talking to? He's talking to those who are persecuted. All these people that have been doing what he said they should do, and now because of what he has told them to be doing, they are persecuting them. These are the people that Jesus Christ is talking to. He now said, Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you. Falsely, falsely, falsely. You see, it's false. They say evil, but it's false. They speak evil, but it's false. They can say, eh, they sleep with them, they sleep with themselves, but it's false. 
You go into the church for prayers, a, a brother, a sister, and the, 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 the five brothers, and then ten sisters, they're in the church, they're praying. After prayer, they come out of the church or they get to somebody's home to go and pray. And they get out and they go and they go there whatever ways. Some people will say they are boyfriend and girlfriend. Some people will say they are sleeping with themselves. They have no evidence and it's all lies. What you are doing is just you are praying and going in the way of God and they are lying against you because of Christ. You can see because of Christ. He said, falsely, for my sake. He then said, once they do that, he said, you don't be angry. You don't be sad. Don't put your head down and be sad. He said, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. He said, once you are righteous and they are accusing you that doing all those things, he said, don't bother, don't just leave them. Your reward in heaven is great. Your reward in heaven is waiting for you and is great. And you and I will get there in Jesus' name. He said, for great is your reward in heaven. He then said, for so persecuted the prophets who were persecuted they, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. He said, do you think you are the first to be persecuted? Do you think you are the first for them to be saying evil against falsely for my sake? He said, no, you are not the first. He went on to tell us that the prophets that were before us, they were persecuted. And they did a lot of things to them. In the case of um, Isaiah, he was persecuted. And most of the words he was saying, they were saying, eh, some people will come against him. The same thing with Jeremiah. He was a prophet of God. He spoke the word of God. He was put in prison. Jeremiah was put in prison. Jeremiah was put in prison. And that's why he's calling, called the weeping prophet. Because of what he saw, he will, why he will weep and cry and, and to turn people away from their sin. And in fact, some of the kings that he prophesied to, they told the word of God, they put him in prison. Some of the people in the land also, they conspire with the king and they put him in prison. The same thing we see in the case of uh, Ezekiel, he was also hated and he was also spoken against. He was also persecuted. Why? Because he spoke the word of God. The same thing with Prophet Hosea, he brought the word of God to them. They wouldn't take it, they persecuted him. The same thing with Prophet Joel, the same thing with Prophet Amos, the same thing with Prophet Obadiah, the same thing with Jonah. Jonah, Jonah even said, if I go to tell them now, they will not receive your word. But eventually we know that they may receive received the word of God. And he said all this thing up to the prophet. Definitely do not have had experience before that when he goes when he goes to the people, they the people they, they, they speak against the prophet. They will say, ah, what kind of prophet is he? What kind of prophet is this? Now look at the case of Jonah. God said, Repent. And if you don't repent in three days or it's also day, the, the city is going to be consumed. The people repented. Some of them will say you some of them will not now, they will not look at the whole message he said. And that is what happens today. Jonah said, Repent. And God said, repent. If you don't repent, it's going to destroy Nineveh. Nineveh, Nineveh has repented. Some people in Nineveh will come up again and say, didn't you say God will destroy our town? Didn't you say God will destroy our city? See us now. God didn't destroy us after one year, after two years. But Nineveh repented and free the condition. The people will take the prophet out of context and they will quote him out of context. All these things are happening today. The Lord is saying it happened to the prophets too. The Lord is saying rejoice, be happy. Don't be sad because of that. As they did to Jonah, they did to Micah. They did also to Nahum. They did to Abba, they did to Zephaniah. They also did to Haggai. When they bring the word of God to them, they don't take the word of God. They did to Amos, the farmer. They don't take his word as, as the word of God. They just look at him as if he's just speaking his own word. The same thing they did with Zechariah. And the same thing they did even with Malachi. He told them, do this, do this. They will make jest of them. They make fun of them as if they are not sent of God. The Lord is saying, blessed are you. When they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for my sake, they are saying it falsely. Not that truthfully you are doing what they said you are doing. No, they are saying it falsely. And I pray you will not be found doing those things that they are saying you are doing forever in Jesus' name. The Lord said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For grace is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are not the first to be persecuted, and you are not going to be last to be persecuted. The Lord is going to give you grace to overcome those persecutions and to prevail and to keep on being righteous and to become being holy and to keep on keeping to the word of God in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes and go to God in prayer and say, Lord, help me to be what you want me to be. Help me to be righteous. Help me to hold on to your word. Help me to walk worthy. Help me to live a righteous life. Oh God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I rejoice in you that despite the persecution, despite the, 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 the temptation, you will help me to stand. You are helping me to stand and you continue to help me to stand in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for everything and I pray much more than I can ever 
never ask for things you give unto me, even at this time, in Jesus' name. Much more than what my listeners are, can ever ask or think of you. Lord, do it for them in Jesus' name. As we obey you, I pray. Move them from minimum to maximum in Jesus' name. Thank you for that for the answer prayer. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you for tuning in to this channel today. Please subscribe to this channel and like the, this uh, video. Also share the link of this video with your family and friends. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, you can watch more of our videos on this channel. God